Hello everybody. So I wanted to do a video for you. This is our one of our first videos of this new channel. And um, just a little background about me. I've been doing fluid acrylic art for about two and a half, three years now. And um, I do it mostly on canvas, but I also do it on ceramics. On We're going to do a wood box today. And this wood box will transform itself into a coin box and such and such. So we're going to be, I was going to be live today, but unfortunately there's something wrong with my laptop. So I'm going to do this quick video so you can see what the backdrop's going to be on the next step of this box that will just transform itself into a beautiful piece of artwork. So what I s decided to do today was uh, use some of the metallic paints that I haven't been um, using and I wanted to try them out. So I wanted to go all metallic today. So we have the Artist Loft Yellow Metallic, the Artist Loft Leaf Green, the Artist Loft Metallic Blue, Metallic Orange, and then we have just a red, uh, I'm, I'm going through these, uh, I bought these, I like them, but I like the Artist Loft brand better, these are the Craft Smart brand, um, just red, I wanted a bright red, and the metallic is a deep red, and then we just have our regular Sargent White that we use a lot, I use, not we, <laughs> Teresa doesn't do art, and then, so this is pre-mix, so, what I decided to do to save time is these are pre-mixed, um, a two to one ratio with water and Floetrol, and then um, two to one ratio with the paint. So what you want to, when you're doing flow art, uh, the first thing is, for me at least, I want to make sure that all my paints are kind of the same consistency. So I'm looking this one, and then I'll go one, see how that one's and then I'll go one and as you do this see how this one isn't it's a little thicker um, this one is a little thin um, and then the red I will not mix in with these other colors and I'm going to tell you why red white and black are very are very funny colors well white and black are not colors they're hues but red will almost sometimes take over a piece so I will probably drop that in after I do the pour. Um, I just find that either I do a base um, with the red or I drop it in because if you drop it in too close to the white it's going to be pink and so on and so on. So I think the only one we have to still thin out a bit will be this blue and this is my Floetrol mix. Like I said it's uh, two parts water, one part Floetrol and um, Floetrol you can get at uh, most home improvement stores. And I like to mix my paint and let them sit for about 10 minutes. They tend to get a little thicker um, as they sit up so that way I know that when I start adding them to my cup they're going to flow correctly. So let's get rid of all these other extra things that we don't need in here. Like I said, I always have two bottles of white mixed up, and that's the white mixed with the Floetrol. Um, so it should be the correct consistency, and I don't have to worry about. I use a lot of white. So if you know me personally, which a lot of you don't because this is a brand new channel, um, I reuse everything. So my, I was raised mostly by my grandmother, and she was from the Depression, and she... Well, we used area everything. So this is just a Perrier bottle. Um, I get these when I go out and play slots. So I take them home and um, I've cut this one. I have little holes on the bottom of this one. And then I did slivers on this one. And when I do my uh, live stream on my main channel, I'm going to use this one. But for this project, I think I'm going to use the one that I just did the little holes on. So we're going to add the paint to that and then we're going to kind of swirl it around and see what kind of effect we get. 
So one thing about flow art is your piece needs to be either wet, like you need a base coat, which I've already painted this uh, wood box black, um, but it's been painted like a week ago. So it's not right now, it's not wet. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it with some water. It's not going to hurt it at all. I'm just going to spray it with some water, get it wet, so that way the paint will want to move. Um, if you're using paint, um, acrylic paint over anything and then sealing it with uh, resin, or which I do a lot of resin art as well, and that will be on this channel, um, you'll want to make sure that, of course, you know, this is wood, but I, all, I already have uh, paint on it, so this will absorb a little bit, but mostly it is meant to um, make the paint run over the sides. So it will kind of dry with the paint. Just want to make sure that our piece is fairly wet. Not so wet that we don't get any paint staying up here, but wet enough that the paint will move. So, um, if you haven't done art, well, that's not the right one. If you haven't done art yourself, um, I encourage everybody to always try it. It's it's a nice, calming, relaxing thing. If if you suffer from uh, PTSD or um, high anxiety, uh, I had a heart attack two and a half years ago, and um, for the first year, I had a tremendous amount of PTSD, and I had a lot of stress um, just from being brought back and stuff. So. Uh, getting into art was, again, I did it a long time ago, but getting into an art art as an adult has been uh, a lot different for me because I feel like I'm way more creative now and I'm willing to just take risks that I probably wouldn't take when I was younger. So I always tell people, you know, I kind of try to think out a project in my mind, but honestly, the best art for me is the ones that I just let the paint do what it wants to do. I kind of maneuver it a little bit. And then I'll look at it and go, no, I want to change it. So as I'm pouring this, you're probably going to say, stop and don't move it anymore. And um, I've, I've been the same way. I've been in watching uh, art streams or art videos, and I'm like, oh, that looks perfect there. But then when it's done, it looks really good too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer the paints in here. Now, a lot of people do their layering completely different. And I just encourage everyone to be themselves and do it the way you want to try it out. Um, the best way that I did it when I first started was I would use um, just 8x10 canvases. And you can continually re-pour over those and, you know, paint it black. And, you know, they're good practice. So to get yourself used to just doing fluid art, um, those are great, and they're pretty affordable. You can get them at, uh, you know, Michaels or Walmart uh, pretty cheaply. They're just the 8x10 canvas. Or you can even go smaller, like the 4x6. But I, f I find the 8x10 was a good start for me because I was able to... Uh, pardon me, I have forgotten to cut a piece of parchment paper. Um, I, I feel like the 8x10 was a good start for me because... Um, it gave me some area that I can move the piece. If, if the canvas is too small, you really don't get to experience moving the paint much. So I would recommend an 8x10 canvas if you're first starting out with uh, doing uh, fluid art. And I will tell you, you know, being an artist is expensive. Um, I probably have at least a thousand dollars invested in all my supplies because I also do resin art. Um, that's just some parchment paper there. Hopefully, it'll stop the. Oh, look, it's gonna want to curl up. I never let it. You know, I just let it do its thing. Um, I like I said, I started with painting, and then um, I got into resin as far as. Uh, using it as an overlay on my canvases, but now I do a lot more resin molding and silicone molding, so 
it, as you add things, every time you add something, it just adds more money. So just keep that in mind. It's, it's not the cheapest uh, thing to do if you really want to get into it. So I'm going to add white first. Um, I tend to use white a lot as my base color, especially when I have black. Um, so we're just going to add some white here. And the white I have here is a little thicker than I normally do, so we're just going to add a little flow trawl to that. Not too much. And where did my little... These are just half cut um, sticks that you get, like little coffee sticks. I cut them in half and they're great for like little cup mixing. So I'm just going to mix that up in there. We don't want the paint not to come out. So we're going to do white first and then we'll do blue. And you can do a side pour. I'm just going to do it in the center. Blue. And we're just going to layer these. Hold your stick. Yellow. Green. Orange. Add some white. Again, up high. And yellow. If you go high, it's going to go deeper. See how it's, see how it's, when you go shorter, it stays there. I don't know if you can see that very well, but hopefully you can. So we're just going to go slower on the group. green, keep it up on the top of the surface as much as possible. Use the rest of that. And I don't like wasting paint, so I normally have a canvas underneath my piece when I'm pouring it. Um, but I don't think that I made a lot of paint, so I'm not so sure that I'm going to need that today. Okay, so we have green. Let's do our last bit of yellow. And like I said with the red, you can drop those, you can put drops of red in now. I'll probably just do that as I'm pouring the paint. Do a little white. This white is a little thicker than I'm used to. I thought I, it thickened up. Some more blue. So I'm going to put my piece on my pyramids. If you don't have pyramids or something to raise your piece, it is, um, I would advise it. I think these are like $12 for a set of eight of them. I use them on my canvases and it's just nice because it'll raise the piece up. Corners. All right, so let me get these out of the way. I'll keep the red kind of close by because I'm going to drop that in. And let's spray this one more time before I pull that parchment off. And we'll 
see what we get. You can already see the white coming out a little. It's going to come out. It's quite a bit of white. The white will run off first. Turn the cup a little bit at a time. We'll get some different kind of kaleidoscopy effects. If, that, if that's a word, kaleidoscopy. I'm going to spray some water in the cup. That'll push that paint through, thin it out. I always tell people they'll see a piece and they'll be like, I absolutely love that. Well, I always say if you absolutely love a piece from an artist, whether it's me or anybody else, um, especially fluid art, and you love, love, love it, um, just buy it because you can never, I mean, I can do this. I can put the paint in this cup the very same way and the next piece is going to look completely different. I have never ever used this cup before, so we'll see how it how I like it. We'll see what kind of effects it does. See if I like it. So far it looks pretty good over here. I don't know how good it looks on the camera. But we have some real cool looking effects. green just wanted to show itself today. It really it really was very dramatic in here. See how you can barely see the white anymore? We're not getting a lot of paint on the edges yet, so I am going to put this back on here. And I'm going to start moving it. And this is where people go, leave it alone. But we got to cover the piece. The beauty, the beauty about this stuff is if for some reason I don't like it, I can just paint over it. That's what I love about fluid art. Just paint over it. <laughs> Got a little bit up front, but not a lot, huh? Let's do this corner first. There's a fair amount of paint still on the 
top, so I think we'll have enough. Okay, I call these horseshoes. My nieces and nephew get the horseshoes, Auntie. So we just spray those and tap our little finger there and she gets some paint. Which is a fun thing if you have a small child that wants to help and they're really tiny and you're like, I don't know if they could do it. But if they can hold a water bottle and you can show them how to get rid of your little horseshoes they can feel like they're part of the project and I have been known to pick up paint I don't mind that we're just trying to get it covered. Wow, the green just... This box wanted to be green, huh? You saw me. I poured the same amount of everything in there. And it just wanted to be green. So, let's do... Got a little bit of paint left in here. Let's get the rest of this dropped out. And as you see, I'm just using a old uh, lasagna pan that the nonstick is not really nonstick anymore. I've had it for a long time. So instead of throwing it away, it becomes part of my art gear. I do that a lot with stuff. really liking the green. I'm hesitant to drop in some red, but I love boldness, so let's drop in a little bit of red. Let's see what the, let, and this red almost looks pink. So let's see what this does. Let's make this a little darker red. I mean, it, it is, even though it says red on, it says red, red, but it's more pinkish, so let's add some dark red to this. Get this a little bit more redder. Redder, is that a word? Get it a little bit more red. Sip this a little, get this, oops, as I stick my tissue in there. Get this water off the side. I don't want it puddling. Piece. Check the front. We still have horseshoes. I've done this on glass. I've done it on all kinds of... It works really good on glass. And then you can seal with resin. Which resin... Getting into resin is expensive. Um, seems like it'll be cheap, and then you have to buy all the little stuff. And so, you want to start doing that. Feel free to comment, and uh, I'll give you kind of a. This is where I'll start. Maybe I'll start a video. A video. You want to do resin? Here's where you should start. Maybe I'll do one of those, because it's very costly. And it seems to overtake your whole house. You can get resin stuff everywhere. Well, wow, that's still way pinkish. I don't know if I want it pinkish. If I make it pink, then it's going to be... Looking like it's only for a girl. 
we want it to look more of a deeper red. So let's get this brick red. Let's get some cherry cobbler in here, maybe that'll make it a darker red. It's starting to get there. just really very pink. Let's run that off. I almost like want a blood red, not this pink thing. And I think just for dramatic effect of the piece, and so it's not overrun, I think I'm just going to do red on one side um, as kind of a, a statement. I don't know. I don't want to mess this up. I like that part. This is already mixed with Floetrol. Let's see if... Yeah, that's a better red. That's a way better red. I think I'll put this red away and cover it, put it in a little bottle and use it for a different project because that is a way better red. That's more of the red I was thinking. Okay, once again, let's tilt this a little bit. I don't want that water puddling up. drops of this. I gotta get rid of that pink look. Oops, that's the wrong one. Duh. I need this one. I need to get more of this one. Craft Smart or Premium Satin. This is the red I wanted. Alright. Now, to marry this effect with this effect, I'm just going to take my little, oh, well, I actually, do I have more in here? You see how much we have left in here. See if I can get a little bit more out of this. There we go. Oh, it's going to swirly. Maybe I'll wait for it to dry a little bit. Every piece is a new adventure. That's what I love about art. Every piece I learn something. Typically, I learn things that I love. I learn things that I don't love. Um, it's kind of interesting. But I have a lot of water on this corner, so and I don't want to move this too much. I want to keep that front that way. That's looking better. I'm just watching this back corner because there's that pink color looks is trying to pop its way through. 
And we don't want that. Not that I don't like pink, but um, my daughter hates pink, actually. But I don't mind it. Um, but I don't want it on this piece. This is really not a piece that would serve itself with pink. So let's check this out. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And then you can see it there, the metallics. So I'll take some pictures so that way you guys can see what I went with with the final. And I thank you for coming in for our step one of our coin box.